In the last few minutes, debt ceiling negotiators wrapped their first round of discussions today on Capitol Hill, ahead of this afternoon's White House meeting between President Biden and Speaker McCarthy. Any potential agreement will likely include concessions from both sides, with the White House potentially asking House Democrats to cover any defections from the Speaker's far right to pass the bill. Illinois Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley joins me now. So, uh, Congressman, thanks very much for being with us. I'm just getting some notes as to what they said when they got out. And they said that they're at a very, I think this is Congressman Patrick McHenry, a Republican, as you know, your colleague from North Carolina, saying there's still no agreement on a few major a items. More work has to be done. And he said we're at a very sensitive point here. As he left the meeting, the goal is to get something that can be legislated into law. And well, I guess that's pretty clear. And that's been the challenge, right? Are you willing to support a compromise now if it, one is reached by, by the White House? But it does give House Republicans some of what they want on those budget issues. Look, we've been here before, and I voted for a compromise under uh, President Obama. But in some respects, the damage has already been done. What I tell Speaker McCarthy is we are showing the world yet again that we can't govern. The fact that you go to the last minute on something like this, the fact that we're even debating whether or not a default is possible. In my lifetime, we've raised the debt limit 78 times, 49 under Republican presidents, 18 under Reagan, three under Trump. Uh, so <laughs> if you don't have a problem raising under Republican administrations, why do you under Democratic terms of office? Well, you're co-chair of the House Ukraine Caucus, so are you concerned over reports also from Bakhmut? about setbacks there, which could you know, hamper the coming offensive. Sure. Uh, look, uh, I'm concerned about a number of things there. I'm not sure I would ever trust anything the Russians say as to what's taking place on the ground, because there hasn't been a grain of truth to it since the war began or even before. But uh, this is a difficult area. I don't know that it's that strategic and important, but it sends a, a message to the rest of the world that things are going well. Uh, what the offensive needs is more of the same. Uh, a lot more ammunition, a lot more 155 millimeter artillery shells, uh, advanced training, and uh, whatever else the Ukrainians need to move forward as quickly as possible. Now, the F 16s will clearly not be there for months and months, but do you think that the F 16s are going to make a difference perhaps in the fall uh, when they can, are finally deployed? And we still don't know what countries are going to supply them. Sure. Are you confident that, I, that there are enough in the supply line that can get there and make a difference? It's a fair question. It depends on cooperation with our allies. But I, I think your previous uh, guest hit it right on the head. This announcement coming when the offensive begins, even though they won't use them, is very important because it sends a clear message to Putin that the West is there for the long term, that it'll give Ukraine whatever it needs to be victorious. Obviously, you've seen the familiar pattern here, right? We began this war arming what we thought would be an insurgency, because, of course, they were going to lose the war in a matter of days. So that was light arms, uh, you know, stingers and javelins. And eventually, we started from no, and eventually got to yes on heavy armor, artillery, um, high Mars, tanks, and finally now, apparently, F-16s. Uh, I'd like to think we've gotten past those stages and will, uh, with the greatest haste, move forward. What is what is uh, Secretary Austin said? Uh, Ukraine doesn't have any time to waste. The offensive is coming. We have to prepare for that, and if there's something after that as well. And very briefly, do you have any hopes that the dysfunction within the Russian command might help the Ukrainians. It has all along. When I traveled to Poland twice to the border and talked to uh, our military experts, uh, they were going to school on that dysfunction, learning about the Russians. Uh, it's helped us so far. So far, I'd like to think it'll sure. Uh, there are some indications that the Russians have learned some lessons, and we have to be wary of that as well. Oh. Congressman Mike Quigley, thank you so very much. The co-chair of the Ukraine caucus and a very important role it is indeed. Thank you. Thank you again, sir.